and here we go. We're doing the uh, In a Perfect World podcast. This is Flash at In a Perfect World on the 30th of July, 2019. For those of you that forget what day and year it is, like me. And a uh, special hello and thanks. Poor Graham suffering out there in his uh, air conditioning module fell to pieces. Something went wrong. Needs to replace a part. They're sending it to him. He's not got received. He hasn't received it yet. So, huh. I think he didn't do a show last night. The old uh, Grim Leftover podcast because it's just yeah. When it's hot and miserable, who wants to sit and sweat and talk about how broke the world is? <laughs> no, Vinny, I didn't break anything. I. Uh, I made a mistake. Before Cirque went to work, the computer uh, had some updates on this virus, whatever stuff we use on it. And I did the mistake of, uh, instead of putting it off till after the show, I went and accepted it. So it, it locked up the uh, rocket broadcaster when I came on. Went, hey, only partial broadcast for you, sir. So I had to reboot the whole damn system to fix whatever I had done to it this time. So anyway, we're live in Denmark at 8.05 in the a.m. That's uh, If you're in New York, that'd be like 2 o'clock in the morning. So you wouldn't be up listening to this if you have something to do in the morning. But me and Vinny just decided, I guess, without speaking about it, just to have some fun with the times and the, the sh- whether we're going to do a show. It's summer anyway. A lot of people are too busy to sit around and listen to radio. And sometimes the best they can do is pick it up on a podcast if they like it. So time being what it is. Uh, and we're just taking advantage of that. Things will go back to some semblance of normal probably after the summer's over. We're all housebound, whining about how fucking cold it is, because, you know, that's that's what we do. <laughs> We're alive, baby, and I'm telling you, when things ain't good enough, we bitch, like little children. Oh, and we complain, and we blame other people, but uh, sometimes I think just the general population's blaming all the wrong people. If your life sucks, well, look in the mirror. Maybe that's why your life sucks and ain't got nothing to do with the rest of us. And I say that because we're all drinking and eating the same shit. So, if your result is bad, maybe there's more to it than just the food and water in your particular situation. Because uh, happiness is a choice that you make about your situation you're in any damn way. You You can't be bullied into being into a bad mood. You can... Let it happen. You know, you can uh, allow it. I think is the right way to put that. And it's hard to, to not be um, aggravated and insulted and want to fight with everybody and all that. It's an easy trap to fall into. But after a while, it just gets old. So we must find something to complain about in the long run because that's where society went. You know, if you say anything good about anything or anybody, you're bragging. And if you say anything bad about anything or anybody, then you're whining. <laughs> so, I don't know. What is the fucking point of all this any damn way? Uh, I want to be entertained in my life. I don't I don't need all the school and the details are pointless. You know? Hmm. Wow. Well, it says, uh, here's a meme for you folks. His genders are like the Twin Towers. There used to be two of them, and now it's a really sensitive subject, depending on where you physically live, I would suppose. Uh, I don't have that problem here in town with anybody. I got, hmm, what do you call it, I have no question that uh, this is predominantly male and female. It's kind of obvious by the children. <laughs> And the, the families in this area, they actually take walks to walk. People with cars will gather up the kids and every now and again just take a walk. So, or they'll drive to the little bitty, bitty part of downtown and they'll actually 
take their kids with them and uh, not separate. And they're not all, all the kids don't have cell phones. Most of them do, lots of them. But it seems like the ones that are tighter with their families, those are the few times where you're going to see a, a kid under 10, let's say under 15, without a phone. You know, because now it's like, uh, what would what would you compare this phone thing to? It's a status symbol. I have a this, that, whoopee, dippy phone, and it does everything for me. And I'm informed, and I'm in tune, and you can find me anywhere on my phone. <clears throat> hmm. Now, when I was young, I would have considered that a trap I didn't want no part of. I wanted uh, the exact opposite. It was hard to find me when I was young with a phone because you could go so many places in one day. There was just a lot of places to go. L.A. was huge. You know, and a five-mile bike ride takes you to another world when you're 12 or 13 years old. You want to go see a film? They had uh, the theaters. They were cheap. You could go see a movie for like 50 cents. I don't think at the time that was a lot of money either. It was uh, spending money, I would call it. So back when I was like 12, I could take a, go to the liquor store and buy some candy and uh, maybe a Coke, put my Coke in my coat or whatever and buy my ticket to the film. So I probably at that point spent a dollar and a half. Now that same event, to buy candy and a Coke, even if you buy it at the store now, costs you a lot more than it used to. And what the simple answer to all these financial problems is the uh, Federal Reserve Bank debt that we carry. So over these years, you know, you're paying all this interest, interest, interest on this huge fucking debt. It's so astronomical. It makes the uh, interest payments astronomical. Well, back when I was 12, those interest rates were, uh, or not the interest rates, but the amount of money that we're paying the interest on was a lot smaller. And here I am, 59 years old, right? And to go to a movie costs you, what, easily, what, 25, 30 bucks to go alone, to go be in a clean, uh, not you know, physically cleaned up place where you can see a film and there won't be a lot of uh, annoying people talking, and irritating, you know, that kind of shit, throwing stuff. Unless you go to the Rocky and you want it that way. But I think somebody was saying yesterday they hadn't been to a theater since, uh, in 25 years. <clears throat> and I've got that, I'm, I'm right up there with you. The last theater, uh, I went, well, no, I'm not that close, because I got trapped into going in uh, 2011 to a theater in Ireland, or no, in Scotland, Ireland. Lost my freaking memory for just a minute, couldn't figure out where I was when I did that. But it came back, finally, and I went to go see a Batman film. Because I'm a Batman fan. I know... Of all the shit that you would expect, you know, something out of me, I would wonder and say probably Batman wouldn't strike you as a personal, you know, look on me, figure that that was my personal favorite. And it's not always the character of the Batman. Sometimes it's the people that support it. Got a great kick out of that damn uh, hit. What was his name? Let Keith, Heath Ledger played the Joker. Did a really over-the-top drama, colors, act, you know, overacting, the whole thing. It was perfect. And that was fun. Because I like to have, you know, like I said in the beginning of the show, we're all pissed off. It's hot. People are getting shot up again. Or at least the media wants us angry. So they got their, uh, they either got their statistical shootings or they got their stage shootings. And they're, they put them in your face at period, you know, key times, certain days of the week. When the weather's at a certain t thing, <laughs> when the moon is in retrograde with Mercury, and all that kind of crap, and all that kind of crap, there's other shit that has some reality to it, because the things that happen seem to happen at certain times, certain dates will come up often, like 9-11. 
and it's still to me it's amazing how the bush family were so involved in the public eye specifically on 9-11 so hmm. it didn't matter what year it was it mattered was the date of the month it was September the 11th and in, in their uh, whatever game these political people play it's obviously something whatever it is we've all got ideas we got opinions we even have fucking links you can open up links and find out just how disturbing government of your personal country truly is yeah oh i never said hello because uh god damn uh Cirk went to work late today and everything's just not quite back to uh whatever my comfortable life thing is it's still a little chaotic Cirque's just back after three weeks of vacation so that the animals and me and her are still just a little vibrating that too hot too fast a little bit right now say hello flash i will do that Vinny. thanks for reminding me because i did forget i just went right over it because who you guys are chatting about i don't know electra and i'm not interested in electra i like movies and all that but okay i already said thanks to grimner oh no that was on my first take what happened is uh, i had to reboot so i got a little screwed up anyway grimner for saving our uh, electronic asses every chance he gets. And I just wanted to let you guys know, if you missed him last night, he's uh, he's in a, the middle of a heat wave without any kind of air. His machine broke down, and he's got the part on order. So as soon as he gets it, he'll be back to probably doing his normal life. But you got to admit, this heat, when it is hot or it is cold... It's just about getting to the point where it's unbearable to the person living in that particular area, whatever that area is. Well, then hang up. You know, get don't listen, Mr. Fucking Goober. Good God, people are so fucking critical. And, you know, uh, I never said hi. Barman, Beetle, Cowboy, Tech, Grimner. Moose Girl, Brackets, DC, Anti, Asmo, Betsy, Gramsy, Ivy Don, C, Java Doctor 2, J, Dread, My Spro, Miss Kate, Rooms, Vanna White, Vinny, Weather Dork, Phantom, Cyber, Cyborg, Noodle, and so Me, Frumped, Frumpy, FF, Gooberzilla, Gromit, J's Nines, J's Kiss, Ponder, Gander, Pone Sauce, and Smart Ass. And those are the bots and bodies that are online. Well, they're logged on. The people are sleeping and stuff. That's why I really wasn't concerned about the hellos when there's uh, <laughs> mostly the people that are online right now don't really care what I think about shit any fucking way. Which, eh, it's, it's all relative, but uh, I have a good fucking time in living my life. So, hmm, how do you explain that in, in a time of life where everybody's a slave to the man, baby? Well, I think the key to my success is that I've accepted that it exists. And I bow to it as little as I fucking have to. And when I do bow to the fucking state, I make it something important, not trivial. You know, like traveling to another country or, oh, I don't know, marrying a Dane. <laughs> Shit like that. There's stuff that I guess in the long run you should be accountable for to some degree. If... Because we live in a different time now than the one I grew up in. We've got instant freaking everything, machines to do all our dirty work. And uh, some of us are looking forward to robots to replace other people with. And those people don't like my opinions. But that's okay. I mean, yeah, I think that's what we're here for. Is to fight and argue and disagree so that your personal life is not comfortable. You know? <laughs> the system doesn't want you happy and comfortable like, like Cirque. Cirque's really like that. She's just happy all the time. Don't give a fuck about much. And at the same time, gives a fuck about everything. You know? Like the, that bet with Goober. You know? She'll pay you if you do it. 
And I told her, fuck it. Why don't you send the money to Graham? Fuck him. He don't need it. He don't deserve it. <laughs> but that's my opinion. <laughs> and that's because of all the negative back and forth goings on on the e-world. You know, where it's not even fucking real in the first place. Because I guarantee you one thing. We all talk a load of shit. We all type a load of shit on the interwebs. But when something seriously goes wrong and there is life and at stake at that particular moment, all of a sudden all these words that we use to fill in the, the quiet, peaceful times goes away. And uh, that fucking instinct that we all got kicks in and doesn't pick and choose. Everybody gets it. So if... Uh, if you're not going to be a part of the answer, you're going to stand out like a sore thumb and people are, are going to shun you. So I don't see any of this that way. I think we're all what what it's been in my life. You know? Even my worst enemy was my best friend in a disaster. So this bantering and disagreeing we do on the Internet is just a bunch of shit. Mm. But... I also believe there's something in the uh, the wavelengths that we get fueled that creates this n desire to be a negative Nelly. <laughs> Piss and moan and whine about shit. Complain about the Oh, so you got immigrants and you got illegal aliens. See, all these illusions and misrepresentations too because good God, the United States is a worse uh, occupier than Israel if you look at your own fucking history and I've never professed to be a history buff on the internet world in the first place but I have seen what other people feel they discovered about the truth about how things work and I'm telling you it is not a pretty story you know like uh, Puerto Rico is Puerto Rico American or not? Well, America actually went in there and fought physically to conquer it and take it. But they've uh, refused it statehood. Why? Remember when Obama was brand new and he says, Yeah, I, I just did a tour. I, I, see, I was in 57 states. And he said that because the political people look at the states differently than we do. They got territories like uh, Guam, uh, what's that, um, so Samoa. Uh, there's probably hundreds of islands that they occupied and just decided this belongs to us now. It's ours. We own it. And as the... Uh, the land mass got bigger. They got to a point financially where they didn't have to accumulate any more land. They have enough land. Now they just, whoa. Now it's all on paper and behind the scenes, and then they send in the military at the end to finish up what the, what the big business has started. And we're living in this, and we think we vote, and we think we got a say in government. And people are delusional. For fuck's sake, well, you name a politician that gets in there and is a successful politician that actually represents a successful place. <laughs> you know, while well, they're getting fat off the freaking uh, stock exchange, insider trading crap, and land deals like Harry Reid. I mean, these people use politics as a vehicle to uh, wealth at the expense of the population. And, oh, Trump's different. Yeah, because he was already a billionaire, he's different. <laughs> wow. Just because you don't believe he's reading a script because he blinks his eyes a lot, you know, and, and he's got his hands folded in front of him like he's afraid to face the camera. And he's saying all kinds of ignorant shit. Don't let that bother you. Rest assured. You are in good hands with the Trumpster. Yep, he's going to he's going to do exactly what uh, what's her name? Hillary would have done from a different angle. It's all the same thing. The end result, invade Iran and take it. Put a central bank in there. Fuck up their country. Make a shithole out of it. 
Let's destroy everything they worked for for however many years. Fuck them all up because they looked at us funny and we don't like it. And when you think about it, that's pretty much all this is about. I seen Trump uh, on a link or maybe I read it. It's right, no, I read it. I read it on a radio podcast. Threatening a nuclear re- war. If you fuck with us and... <laughs> See again if you know the if you know any of the truth about uh, our our U.S. history, you find out that there's no such thing as the U.S. It's it's a big story and a it's a business. It's got nothing it absolutely fuck all to do with us as individuals until you uh, try to break away from the pack and and do anything without them. So. As long as you stay invisible with no visible means of support where you're... They won't come and get their cut, their taxes. Well, then they don't give two shits about you. Oh, the other side, you can't go to them and ask for, like, medical care or uh, finance. No, 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 no. Avoid the trap of government, finance, and... and, 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 uh, (laughs) They're medical. Good God, it's absolute garbage. And I feel the same way about it here. Cirque doesn't like that about me, but uh, I told her I don't want to go see no fucking doctors. No way. What for? What are the doctors here going to know that the doctors where I'm from don't think they know too? And the crap that the doctors know, it, according to... See, we're, we're not experts in fields and all that shit. So what people kind of leave out about the individual is that individual might be 30, 40, 50, 60 years old and been through something physically their self. Not watched a movie, not saw a link, not read a book. You know, like my uh, my aversion to the uh, inoculations is based on reading material. My aversion to the police is based on physical experience with the police because they're what they are. And trusting the uh, medical system now nah, I'm beyond all that I know better than that now I feel horrible for people that that are, are tied to it you know chained to it for survival when there's other ways to do it then if you try to teach somebody else that then you're accused of being some kind of a problem <laughs> Harry is on it against the Bundys says Vinny Mr. 420. I don't know. He's talking to Goober about something, I suppose. But me and Goober don't get get along personally for some reason. Uh, But that's okay. I don't think the world is supposed to be perfect in that respect. It's, It's a matter of how far are you willing to carry around with you the, uh, the distaste you feel for other people because it's really an illusion you know it doesn't really matter so uh, I think it's just like a distraction to keep my mind off something I need to think about instead of doing that hey I'll fight with Uber and the beauty of arguing on the internet is it's the farthest thing from real fucking real argument there possibly could be all you got to do is change the screen and the, and the argument's gone <laughs> yeah if you're doing that in a bar with somebody well somebody's got to get punched in the fucking head before the argument's over so i prefer to have my disagreements on the e-world uh, let's say than the uh, physical world so hmm. and i'm not going to claim being right or wrong that's that's for all you geniuses out there to do I'm saying I'm right for myself, and that's more than that's more than enough. That satisfies me. Uh, he was talking to me. Oh, hey, cool. Yeah, well, I would expect Vincent. If you had some bad news, I would have heard it long ago. So you know, there you go. As long as yeah. Oh, Harry Reid, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's against the Bundys because he wants that fucking land. That's probably one of the big things they're not talking about. 
is the land that Harry Reid acquired while he was a sitting senator is important, valuable, this, that, and the other strategic, and it's got mineral rights, and this rights, and those rights, and water rights, and land rights, and copyrights, and rights for pigeons and dogs on that land. And I don't know how much of it is either close to, or maybe Bunny uh, was using the land that Harry bought. I'm not sure how all that worked out in the details, but like, you know, like anybody on the internet, Vinny, I got a lot of ideas about a lot of shit, and in my personal life doesn't mean a flying fuck, nothing. Anything that in the world, the electronic world that uh, has something to say and affect me, it would have to be physical at this point in life. I've been away from the physical uh, America for, oh, good Lord, since 11, eight years now. Coming up on eight years in September. And I just get older, so I get more in instead of being able to rattle it off. Yeah, eight years. No, i got to think about it because I'm getting older and further away from it. And I don't, don't consciously look at it very often. I'm very comfortable, so... Even when I look around and I see these little Danish homes and I think, wow, I'm still in fucking Denmark. This is pretty cool. I don't usually think about the amount of time that I've been here when I think about that. It's just the day, you know. Um, hmm. We have this ongoing disagreement about, in life, people, about who lives more in the moment than the next guy, you know, because... Uh, Sometimes we carry shit around from other times and bring it into the time we're in. And somebody's close to you, like maybe my wife, Circle, or my buddy Vinny, might say that they know me a little better than most people do. I would say probably. So, we've all, you know, we've all talked about all this stuff. And I've decided that it's all a matter of what I'm willing to carry around with me and take, you know, take it personal and it, I really don't. Uh, hmm. I might get a little hot for a minute, write some bad words, but uh, not enough anger to to commit murder. You know, nothing stupid like that. I'm not going to go out and uh, shoot up a festival because Goober insulted me on the internet, so I feel bad, so I'm going to go out and kill people. But we have people that are convinced that this kind of stuff is not only possible but happening. There's a wackadoodle out there with a gun just waiting to go off and kill people. And I I think usually the the results will show you that whatever you saw it at the very least was manipulated to show you what you were supposed to see. And at the very worst, complete and total fraud. Actors, pretend scripts, made up, film it at this angle, directed by a certain kind of guy to get a certain kind of result out of the person looking on. And then there's us, whatever this group of um, hmm, uh, individuals, I would say. That's the one thing you can say about reallibertymedia.com is there's no group about it. Everybody's on their own. We all... <laughs> We might have three or four other people that, that we agree with or seem like or whatever, but the, then there's everybody else. <laughs> because uh, all this social shit gets broken down. So, you know, so by the time you're done you know, dissecting it and you step back, all you have is a, a big pile of cut up small pieces of something that you can't identify it anymore because it's too small. And now it's just a big pile. But we know the answers. It's it's all the aliens' fault, you know. Not the politicians' fault for writing all this shit into law and creating it. No, 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 no. That's the, the people's fault. But like I started out harping about in the first place, the U.S. is such an invader on its own, an invader and an occupier to this day. And that's why the uh, Puerto Ricans don't have statehood. That's why they can't. They have no say in their own land. They, they have to do what, <laughs> what they're told, like everybody else, like me, like you, because we got, you know, rope. These other people, they get barbed wire. 
and they're forced and they're used and they're abused in ways that we're not really clear on because most of us don't go to other people's lands to see how they live in the first place. We just believe the story we're told. Now, I've had the opportunity to go a few places. And I usually had heard a different story than the one that I saw when I got, whoops, when I got to my uh, destination, you know, wherever I was going. And Denmark's not, uh, I don't know, it's not really a good example because where I'm at is so rural and everybody knows everybody kind of life that uh, outsiders, they're a tourist trap too. So a few months out of the year. These people get American tourists. <clears throat> so America's ties to Denmark on a paper level are one way. And then, you know, the people that come here to visit the Danes from the States, and they got relatives over there, some of them, just like us. You know, we're all part of this big thing. And uh, the Americans have a good reputation still in, in this part where I'm living. Where in uh, in Copenhagen, where it's got a way bigger population, it got like 400, 400, or I don't know, 450, maybe 1,000 living down south there. And it's uh, it's still, hmm, it went, I haven't been there in a while, so I, I really can't say as of how it is today. I have to go back to Copenhagen. Maybe me and Sir can take the dog down to Freetown go visit her mom that's what she was saying she wanted to go do but the last couple of like week or two weeks it's just been a little bit too hot to be doing much besides lazing around like a slug on your vacation <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's pretty much that but uh, hmm. anyway I was going on about the real history behind the occupiers and the invaders and it's not just the U.S., good God, the U.S. learned from the English, who learned from the this, who learned from the thems, who learned before them and before them and before them. Just now we've got all this electronic shit to interfere with it. So we can really do some uh, changing. But the saddest part of the thing, I believe, is not everybody that needs to... Uh, that needs to be involved to acquire the change that we need to do is available to be online. You know, that's a whole another. <laughs> that's another whole part of the thing is we may never uh, get everybody connected that needs to connect, even though we have the ability. We might not have the the tools at hand. You know, and the government's threatening now. They're saying they're going to tax means. So, you know, it's and it's always tax to punish, fine to punish. Well, the the control. I mean, what you see as a fine, I see as somebody else telling me what I can and cannot do again. And if I dare to do it, their little group is going to hijack me and take me captive and by force take something from me because that's what they do. Now, if somebody did that and they didn't have a, a flag to wave, to claim, uh, jurisdiction, blah, 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 would you tolerate it or would you shoot back? Because I hear a lot of people talking big game on the, you know, on real liberty media about guns and shit. And uh, Grimm's a big talk guy. Grimm says he keeps a shotgun. Okay. I've got a lot of respect for a gun because when I'm a sober human being, they're a dangerous thing to fuck with if you don't know what you're doing. And if you if you do, they're just a weapon, or a tool, a toy. It depends on your wording. But uh, how many of us truly have the uh, the wherewithal to wake up to screaming and yelling after our training with a weapon, and not just automatically grab the gun and start blowing people away? You know, there's variables. There's <laughs> And the system, these fucking pricks in power, use little things like that to just make the laws tighter for the safety of the children. 
Now, I say one thing. I'll say it again. It's arm every fucking body and just let nature take its course. You know, nature is fine at, at sorting things out. When you stop trying to control it and you just let it do its thing. But that's what people did is they took they took control of nature. They call it like pharmaceuticals, research and development. When they have the answer the whole damn time about hemp, this is not a secret. Hemp is a miracle plant. It's capable of so many things. It's not you can't speak about it on a one hour show. Hemp can do so much. But uh, <laughs> people don't know this. And the people that do know it, that understand it, apparently there's not enough of them to collectively force the freaking government to reverse this prohibition because they don't want to reverse the prohibition. They cannibalized hemp. They cannibalized cannabis. They made it illegal when they never should have from the first place, right? Completely destroyed people's lives for almost 100 years. Now it's legal, but you get the same result if you don't play within the guidelines of the state then we're going to punish you for this particular plant. Well, and, and collectively, again, because of the religious and the, you know, book readers, people that don't, people that don't, don't have the balls to experience life, live life through other people's writings. You know, oh, I read it in a book. I'm so smart. And no, you're not. I don't know what smart is exactly, but I don't see a lot of it. If if I do that, see that's what I mean. When I see it, raises my eyebrows and go, "Wow, that was pretty fucking smart." But it doesn't happen very often. Usually, I just giggle, you know. And yeah, Goober in his freaking spaceships all the freaking time, like uh, like it matters. I'd rather face the life I've got than pretend uh, and live in a life that's fake, you know. So I do as little sniveling about the uh, choices that I make. I think it's about that. Yeah, bye, Goober. But I think life is about the uh, the choices you make, or maybe the choices that make you. How do you do it? Um. Because it depends on how you look. Because some people say, well, life is endless opportunity. and Well, life is endless uh, lack of balance. You know, where somebody has a skill and a talent in one respect, and they're really good at what they do, but they sell at, say, sales. Or, vice versa, you're a great salesman, but you don't have a product. Or, what about this? What if you're Vinny? And you know both of those guys, and you have, or gals, whatever. You have the ability to recognize the strength in both of them and figure out if they knew each other, something might come of it. But that's not how we seem to behave with each other. People, they brag and they boast and they got this and they got that, but they're very selfish, very tight with it all. Hmm. And I don't know. Come to Denmark and come to my house and I'll, I'll feed you. So there you go. Got a place to stay. And that the weird part about it, I don't think uh, living here would entice people to... There, the appeal to me would not translate to you because, you know, this is my reality, so to speak, right? And I came here for a different reason. I didn't come here for the Danes. <laughs> I came here for a Dane, you know, with a purpose, so to speak, a uh, on a mission to see if I was being told the truth by a certain woman. Well, apparently I was so impressed at the time, and still more or less to this moment because I'm still here, that uh, I just uprooted from where I was. I was going somewhere anyway. So, that's, you know, it wasn't a... Hmm, it was just a pure 100% choice. 
you know, where you can, where you can always not do something. And that's not how, of course, life has changed. Now there isn't any more of that. I can change what I'm doing to please me thing going on so much. It's more about you know, the survival of the of the unit, you know, the, the bond that we made with our straw man. So, you know, my responsibility in, in life is to not do her, the straw man we made any damage. And that, I'm doing good. I haven't hurt Cirque yet. So, there you go. But, you know, the state is an evil fuck. And the state will surprise you with, you know, upgrades to old laws because they need more money. And I'm not immune to that here. But so far, so good. It hasn't happened. There's no uh, great influx of people moving in and invading us and all that crap guru types about all day. Not that it's not true. It's just, you know, a good word about something every now and then to balance the negative kind of helps. And, you know, some people get stuck on negative and they can't get off it and don't realize it. Because we don't, you know, I don't see me the way you do, whoever you may be. Uh, but I'm pretty sure it would be two different people. Uh, and I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a nine o'clock. I'm going to run another 15 minutes and call that. An in a perfect world Vinny list on this uh, 30th of July, the last July I can say on the show, because next month we change to another month, and it's some other guy that we're gonna be chanting about for a while. Yeah, get into that, um, the definition of things. <laughs> That's why I was doing the rant about uh, the. Occupying the occupying the occupying uh, America does, and Israel does, and then they go attack other countries that don't do any of that, and they blame them for the most just disgusting shit that would piss any fucking buddy off, and it always turns out to be bullshit. So, but this time it's different, you know. No, this time they they mean it this time, and not. Nah, I don't. I didn't buy it when I was young. I don't buy it now. I don't live in that world physically, so I can only react to it on the radio because it doesn't happen in my real daily life. Uh, I can't remember the last time it did, even in Copenhagen or Scotland, North Carolina. The, the government does not affect me. I live my life with or without these fucking people. They they just exist and you know, they create the rules and the guidelines for this uh this clusterfuck they call society. This failed <laughs> it's a it is a hopelessly failed experiment, in my opinion. You can't fix the destruction that's been done. All you can do now to save society is to stop. But, see, that's not progress. And you got progressives. <laughs> I've had those for a, a long time. They hijack the uh, the liberals. I think Mary taught me about that. The progressives movement hijacked the liberal movement. And now they're a fucking nightmare. <laughs> now, the capitalists, on the other hand, well, they're a bunch of lying fucking thieves. And they use Jew banking, so you can't trust them either. Now, the Muslims, they do their banking charges differently than interest rates and shit like that. So, it's, uh, it's, more, it's more fair to the user, their system is. But, believe, you got to be an Arab to participate. Because that's what that is, their shit. The Jews, the Jews will sell a... a Anything to just about any fucking body for the right price. They have no uh, no morals. The Jew is not a moral person. But like everybody else, they're lied to about so much crap that uh, how do you go against your government? So there you go. It's not the Jews again. Wait a minute. 
What could it be? <laughs> Zionism. <laughs> because now when you uh, when you complain about Zionism, you're being anti-Semite. So there's the answer right there in the law that they're trying to make you obey. <laughs> if you don't see this the way we tell you it, it is, not the way it is, but the definition we give you, well, then we're going to whip the fuck out of you. And people are, uh, they're bowing to this shit. And it's universal. And they say, well, I don't want to support the Arabs. Uh, okay, why? What in the fuck do you know about living in an Arab country in the first place? That you didn't bomb first. That's what I'm saying. Is... The civilized Iranian folk that I've encountered in the last 20 odd years in America and, and anywhere I've been, they're always really nice to me. So, what? I don't understand how the people can be so forgiving to the people that are from the place that fuck their house up. <laughs> you know, it's like if you blew my house up while I was out out down at the grocery store and I come back to a big pile of rubble um, am I going to thank you for doing it <laughs> well you're such a great person thanks for destroying my shit no, I'd be pissed off and angry right well what is it about the people that we understand that it's not the people doing it that it's the government behind those people doing it and or is it that I just happen to have the kind of fortune in life to constantly run into people in society no matter where I go that are from other places that seem to think the way I think could that be an uh, attributed to the traveling thing to not being so bound by society for so long that uh, now that I am bound to it I see it differently could be that too because uh Wow, you can get accustomed to any kind of living if you stay there. Sooner or later, you know, even moose. Once that winter time was over, eh, it was a piece of cake. But when it was happening, it wasn't a piece of cake. But that's how we are. You know, and once we survived it, then yeah, well, no, anybody could have done that. <laughs> and the reality of it is, I think, is that we, we choose our own paths in ways, and in some ways, the path's chosen for you in some ways. And uh, the balance has got to be found, and if you're not balanced, you're going to be either too happy, which is probably drunk, or too sad, which is probably taking pills. And But some, you know, something's got to... Uh, some additives are required in life because this is what we were raised by the indoctrination to do. And there's still people indoctrinated to not be indoctrinated are indoctrinated. That's the whole point of that concept to me is whatever rules that you follow were set for you by somebody else. You didn't make those rules up on your own. You know, every uh, physical act I take in in this corporate life, you know, where you live under this flag and you live under that flag crap, all that nonsense that everybody takes so damn seriously. And I just don't because it's only uh, it's only applicable when you involve commerce it doesn't have anything to do with you when there's no money to exchange. So that's that's how you beat it is you don't exchange money but see I teamed up with somebody that does that so it worked out really good for both of us because I have my strengths in life that you know other people would because <laughs> they take experience to go through them to do them and then make them work in your daily life so they're uh, useful and some people wow man, they think that I got a piece of paper I can make you do anything I want and then they meet me 
you know, there's nothing that you can do to convince me to do something based on money. Money does not motivate, but survival does, you know, and uh, I've always been one to have a good time with my uh, source of income in, in, uh, in my history. So I have a lot less complaining to do about when I did work than <laughs> some people that I've listened to. Hold on one second. Be right back. to do some pipe work here anyway so yeah, I just ranted about this that and the other on this uh, in a perfect world yeah I came to terms me and goober don't get along Eh, big deal uh. <coughs> whoop <coughs> <laughs> Hell of a way to, to end the show. Anyway, this band in a perfect world with uh, Flash, not Vinny. And we've got coming up on the schedule for the week, anyway. Tomorrow night, 7 o'clock, Graham Z does the Rocket Chair podcast. And she does that on Wednesday and Friday night, reallibertymedia.com. And <clears throat> other places according to her then we got uh, me thursday i'll be back with uh, 20 percent off my real intended solo project because uh that's the one i wanted to do then uh friday gramsy i think we got Vinny doing a ponder gander this week at noon noon his time i'm not sure but I think so. Then Gramsci at 7. Uh, Grimner and Moose Girl do a Freaker's Ball at 11 o'clock. Boy, I hit that pipe just a little too hard that time. Sorry, folks. At 11 o'clock on the East Coast. And then Saturday I'll do a Dork Table. 12 o'clock East Coast. And then uh, Sunday, we got the Blues in the Morning. And then we got Trivia. And then I got it screwed up. It's noon on the West Coast, 12 o'clock on the West Coast. Got Hal Anthony from behind the woodshed. But these time zone things, I, whenever I want to hear somebody's podcast, they're usually on when I'm in sleeping, you know, in Sleepinville. And uh, they're live, and, and I'm either busy or, or in bed. So I got to rely on the podcasts. There you go. And then Monday, Grim had that little problem with his uh, air conditioning. But he'll be back Monday with Grim Leftovers. Uh, and then the following Tuesday, I will say this now. I'll do this again at 8 o'clock, <laughs> my time, in a perfect world. Uh, but maybe I won't. We'll see. If there's any changes and you're following the thing, I'll make sure that it's uh, put on the thing, the uh, link, so you can read it. There will be... No way for you to not find me. <laughs> I'm on the interweb. Thanks a lot, everybody, that did play along. And y'all have a good night. Over and out.